Thanks for the introduction. Today, I'm going to talk about our system called E3, which is to support microservice execution transparently on Smartic Accelerate servers to gain better energy and cost efficiency. So this is a joint work among University of Washington, University of Texas Austin, and UC Berkeley. Our work is motivated by three recent trends happening in the data center. First, energy efficiency has become a major factor when designing today's data center. It is reported that US data centers consume 70 billion kilowatt hours of energy per year, and server CPUs consume the most, occupy 57% of it. The second trend is SOC-based SmartNICs are emerged in the data center. These SmartNICs are a new kind of heterogeneous computing platform in the data center. They present on the packet data path and can process networking requests in short latency. More importantly, they consume much lower power than a server CPU. In this work, we focusing on the Liquid L SmartNICs, which includes an Electron 12-core MIPS processor running at 1.2 gigahertz, a couple of domain-specific accelerators like crypto engines, pattern, um, pattern matching units, or fetch and add atomic units. The SmartNIC has a WIMPy memory hierarchy with 32 kilobytes L1 cache, four megabytes L2 cache, and four gigabytes uh, DRAMs. As a result, it can only hold applications with small application working set. The SmartNICs have two Tenji ports. The third trend is cloud applications are increasingly built with these loosely coupled microservices, such as Azure Circle Database, the LT uh, hubs, or video processing, Google Ads, or even complex scenarios like Netflix or Twitter. These microservices are fine-grained with small memory footprint, and they are communication intensive, which is invoked with RPCs. Usually, programmers build microservice-based applications with different kinds of programming mod models, and in our work, we apply data flow program model where programmers build applications by assembling the deck graphs. As a result, the communication patterns are explicitly assigned by the programmers. So microservices are usually run by a cluster scheduler like Azure Service Fabric or Google Application Engines. As a result, it is easy to explore cluster level architectural heterogeneity by running microservice applications. In this work, we evaluate eight microservice-based applications from three common workload domain they are network function virtualizations, real-time data analytics, on, or LT hubs. Each application uh, comprises 60 to 108 microservices. Here is an example that shows LT thermostat analytic applications, which is built with microservices and arranged in three stages. The blue box here is microservice, and the arrow here is RPC request flows. Requests come from externally, go to the API gateways, and in the first stage, the thermostat updates will be authenticated by the gateway. And in the second stage, we will log in the updates into a sharded circle store. And finally, we will trigger different kind of data analytics tasks, like spec detections, uh, expand removing average, or some recommendation tasks. So based on these three trends, we build E3 systems. Our idea here is to run microservices on SmartX to gain better energy efficiency with minimal latency cost. So in our work, we build two types of SmartNIC servers. One is a single SmartNIC server, another one is a multi-SmartNIC server. The first type is a one-use server box, which has an Intel Haswell machine with 64 gig DRAMs with one liquid L SmartNIC. They connect to the TOS switch with a 10 G in, uh, links. The second type is a two-use server box, which has two uh, Intel Broadwell machines, uh, processors, which were 128 gig DRAMs and four SmartNICs. The server box connects to the TOS switch with a 40G Ethernet breakout cables. The key questions we try to answer with E3 is like, in terms of running microservice-based applications, does SmartNIC-based servers providing better energy efficiency compare with other homogeneous or heterogeneous cluster setups? And in this work, we consider three kinds of cluster. The first cluster is a homogeneous beefy cluster, where each server is a super micro one U box, has one Intel 12 core E5 2680 V3 processors, running at two and a half gigahertz. It has 64 gig DRAMs with an Intel NICs. The second cluster is a homogeneous WIMPy cluster, where each box is a standard X like settings, 
And in our case, we use one u Calvium CN6880 uh, SOC, which has an octal 32 core MIPS processors. And it has four gig DRAMs and two 10 chip ports. And the third cluster is a heterogeneous cluster which is containing uh, two above mentioned servers. And in this work, we use onboard IPMA utility or external WhatsApp Pro meter to measure the server power. And we report class power by aggregating across all the servers. So here's the outline of the talk. I will firstly discuss the challenge of integrating Smartnix into microservice uh, execution platforms. And then we'll, I will talk about how we address them in E3. And then I will talk about the evaluations in terms of energy efficiency, cost efficiency, and latency. And then I will conclude the talk. So as we mentioned, Smartnix is a new kind of heterogeneous platform on the data path. It presents three challenges to integrate into microservice execution. The first challenge is addressing and load balancing. Because Smartnix share the same MAC address with the host server, therefore traditional L2 layer switching is not enough. We need another address and load balancing mechanism to deliver traffic to the host server. The second challenge is Smartnix overloading. Because microservices share the NIC resource with the NIC firmware, when it is overloaded, the Smartnix will not be able to deliver enough traffic to the host server. And the third challenge is non-uniform communication cost. In our characterizations, we found like Smartnik to host performs faster than Smartnik to Smartnik and Smartnik to another remote host. So these are the three challenges we found. And in E3, we address them with three tactics. So from a high-level view, E3 is a microservice execution platform. It follows the design philosophy of Azure Service Fabric and adds three techniques to support Smartnix. They are ECMP-based load balancing, a load-aware cluster manager, and a communication-aware microservice placement algorithms. The first technique is ECMP-based load balancing, which is an intra-server addressing mechanisms. It works in three steps. First, we assign different Smartnix and host server with different IPs, and this is for addressing the host server. And in the second step, we will apply NIC teaming to bound all the available Smartnix ports and exposing one logic interface to the host server. As a result, the host server can use all the Smartnix bandwidth. And in the last step, we will enable ECMP at the toll switch. So consider the ingress traffic. The load balancing will rely on the ECMP at the toll switch. And on the egress side, we will rely on the NIC teaming policies. So compare with a case without our approach, where all traffic comes, comes through one Smartnix, our mechanism achieved 2.5x better higher throughput, which translates to 2.2x better energy efficiency. The second technique uh, we propose is a load-aware cluster manager, and it's try to avoid host starvation. The problem happens because microservice interference with the NIC firmware. As a result, they will contending for the SmartNIC memory and cache resources. To address this problem, we rely on the cluster manager the class manager will keep monitoring the ingress packet QDAP of the SmartNIC and the microservice CPU intensity. And then when it is found it is above the threshold, the class manager will migrate the CPU intensive microservices to another commutation node. And in our approach, we only add two more views to the original service fabric heartbeat message. One is the NIC QDAP, another one is CPU intensity. So when enabling our approach, uh, it can achieve 5.9x better energy efficiency and reduce latency by 27%. The third technique we propose is a communication aware microservice placement algorithms, which is try to consider the non uniform communication cost presenting in the Smartnix servers. In the service fabric, it applies a stimulant annealing method and consider a couple of constraints, such as the static node information, like how many CPU cores in the one communication node and what's the memory capacity of each computation node, and also and some other runtime statics like CPU network utilizations. But it didn't consider the communication distance between two microservices. And in our approach, we propose a hierarchical communication-aware microservice placement algorithm. Specifically, it organizes the communication nodes into different levels of communication distance, and we place communication, uh, communicating microservices close to each other and we provide a hierarchical way to prune the search space. 
So our algorithm takes three inputs, which is a subset of service fabric. It is a microservice that graphs, the source micro, uh, node of the graph, and the server cluster topology. The algorithm will perform a breadth-first traversal of the graph and map each microservice node to a computation node in the cluster. So consider the following single rack examples. We will put, uh, if we put the first microservice on the SmartNIC node, then L1 will be the same computation node as uh, the original SmartNIC. The layer two will be another computation node on the same server. And the layer three will be another SmartNIC computation node. And the layer four will be a host computation node on other servers. Compare with the service fabric approach, HCM improves energy efficiency by 16% and reduces latency by 13%. So we built E3 on commodity hardware and compare with different cluster topology as we mentioned before. So firstly, I will talk about the energy efficiency benefits. We take three SmartNIC, uh, single SmartNIC servers and the three Intel BP servers, and then we deploy as many as application instances as possible where E3. And then we're increasing the client-side workload to maximize throughputs, but without overloading it. And this is based on the latency throughput curve. And then we measure the cluster throughput and the cluster power. So the following figure shows the energy efficiency in terms of 1,000 requests per joule for eight different applications. And for the LT thermostat applications that we showed before and the data analytics applications, so on average, for these two applications, it achieved 1.3x better energy efficiency. And for the three real-time data analytics applications, like data Twitter data analytics, analytics application, uh, spam filter, or server health monitoring application, on average, it also achieved 1.3x better energy efficiency. And for three network function virtualization applications, they are flow detections, IPsec gateways, and instrument detection. On average, it achieved 2.5x better energy efficiency. And for this one, this is because we can offload more microservice to the SmartNIC to take advantage of the SmartNIC accelerators and the chip computation uh, parallelisms there. We use the same experiment setup to uh, evaluate the latency. So the following figure shows the average latency in terms of milliseconds for eight applications. And we compare two settings. We observe at most four percentage latency cost for one of the real-time X applications. And this is because in E3, it only puts the count microservices on the SmartNIC and put all the other microservices on the host side. As a result, there will be some unnecessary communication happens between SmartNIC and host servers. Next, I will talk about uh, cost efficiency of running micro, uh, SmartNIC servers. We use the request per dollar as the metric and apply the following uh, formula. The formula will consider the peak micro service throughput in time and divided by the total cost of ownership in time. And this cost, including the capital cost, which is constant, and also the peak uh, cluster energy cost in time. So the following figure compares four different cluster setups for one of the applications. So X is a time of ownership. The application here is thermal health uh, monitor applications. This application has both I/O and compute intensive microservices. So in our case, it achieved up to 1.9 best uh, more cost efficiency after five years compared with the second best case, which is the beefy uh, cluster. And this is the best case for our eight applications. And for the worst case, uh, we consider a uh, network function virtualization application, which is flow monitoring, and this is pure error intensive. And we found that Wimpy cluster is the most cost efficient one. And our per approach, the multi smart cluster, ranks the second, which is 14 percentage less after five years, uh, then the best one. In the paper, we have more evaluations, uh, such as the power proportionality and how our mechanisms perform at scale. So to conclude, uh, SmartX are heterogeneous computing units on the data path. And in this work, we build the E3 systems to offloading microservice on SmartX servers to gain better energy efficiency. In particular, we propose three techniques uh, an ECMP-based load balancing mechanism, a load-aware cluster manager, and a communication-aware microservice placement algorithms. We build the system on commodity hardwares and liquid health smartniks and compare with different kinds of homogeneous or heterogeneous clusters. And we found like 
Smarting servers can achieve up to 3x better energy efficiency with at most 4% latency cost. And wind applications can, can uh, contain both I.O. and compute intensive microservices. It will achieve up to 1.9 better cost efficiency after five years of ownership. Uh, that's what I have for today. Uh, thanks. I'd like to take questions. Ed Bunyon, EPFL, great talk. Uh, I just have a technical question. So if you combine ECMP with NIC teaming on a regular server without smart NICs, you end up having this, this key effect, which is that the flows, the two directions of the flows are not going down, down the same wires, right? And that's perfectly fine and perfectly not a problem. In your case, it seems that you need to make sure that the two directions of the same flow are handled by the same path. I'm just wondering how you do that. Like the question is, in our case, uh, on the ingress side, we rely on the TCM, uh, ECMP, and on the egress side, we rely on the uh, NIC teaming and how to make sure the flow goes to the same wire. Is yes. that the question? Yeah, that's the question, because it's not guaranteed if you just use NIC teaming and ECMP vanilla. Yes, yes. So in our case, we didn't make sure they are the ingress and egress go, flow go to the uh, different, uh, go to the same wire, because there are two different flows with different uh, five tuples. Therefore, in our case, we on the ingress side and egress side, based on different hashing policies, they will go to different things. Hi, uh, Thomas from TU Wien. You showed that the relative energy efficiency per request is, uh, is better. Did you also analyze the overall absolute impact on the, uh, on the energy consumption of a data center? Uh, you mean overall in terms of at How much center? energy would the, uh, would the data center consume less with your approach? Um, so we don't, we don't have uh, data center scale evaluations. So in the paper, we present the data for the cluster scale, and we show how much energy we can, uh, energy we can save compared with different uh, other cluster setups. Uh, but we have the detailed data in the paper, but it's not in the data center scale. It's in the cluster scale that we are evaluating. Um, hi, Marius Koya, CPFL. Uh, great work. I have a question about your load aware cluster management. Uh, how fast can it react to load changes? So, what kind of load imbalances are you going after? Yes, so that's a good question. The question is uh, how, react, how fast we can detect the load change and then make the migration decisions. So, in this case, the trade off is depending on the uh, heartbeat message frequency. Therefore, uh, our reaction to that will be bounded by the periodical heartbeat message frequency. And it will be uh, two round trips to the cluster, uh, once to the cluster to, pack, to know the information and then make the info, make migration decision to the smart link, then migration. And that is a parameter that can be tuned in our systems. Let's thank our speaker again.